Hi, this is Mesh Rundown. If you enjoy movie reviews and trailer reactions, you're in the right place. I want to subscribe and hit the like button down below. On this Throwback Thursday, we're reviewing Halloween 2 from 1981. Halloween 2 is a 1981 slasher film directed by Rick Rosenthal. It stars Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie Strode and Donald Pleasance as Dr. Sam Lubis. The movie directly follows the events of the first one. It follows Michael Myers as he continues his murderous pursuit of Laurie, but just in the hospital this time. So, not all sequels are straight continuations. This one is a straight continuation. Just felt like a two-parter. Yeah. And I think that also might be a little bit of a problem for some people, because if you've waited two years to watch the movie, you might be a little bit lost or a little bit... You might have lost a little bit, especially because you don't really see Laurie besides her lying in a bed for 90% of the movie. So she's not really the hero she was in the first movie because she's in a bed for most of it. Yeah. So if it's a direct continuation, if you're watching them one after another, it's great. If you're watching this by itself, don't. And then Michael Myers is a pretty good boogeyman. I mean, he's in the shadows, he pops out and he kills people. That's, yeah, he's a good, effective boogeyman. It's what you expect from a boogeyman. Yeah. I also like the character of Laurie, even though she stayed in bed a lot of the time. And I also like the psychiatrist once again, because he's willing to do anything to get rid of Michael Myers. Yeah. I think, though, that the, you know, delving into the bad now, that the other characters were completely underutilized. They kind of introduced a couple of people that could have been interesting and played a bigger part in the movie, especially like the boyfriend. Yeah. Well, you know. Boyfriend. But... They didn't, and it just was like, there were three interesting characters in the whole movie, everyone else was so background that, I don't know, don't even know why they were there. I think they were there as cannon fodder. They were there for Michael Myers to murder his way through. So, yeah, you knew, okay, we're introducing someone, cool, they're gonna die. Introducing someone, cool, they're gonna die. Introducing someone, they're gonna die. <laughs> Whereas the first movie had set up quite a few characters that maybe you liked and cared about or they were setting them up in a stereotypical you know you shouldn't do this in movies if you want to survive yeah. this one had nothing it was if the camera's been on someone for more than two minutes and it wasn't laurie and it wasn't sam loomis they were gonna die and the continuation of the movie wasn't great either because at one stage the boyfriend is in blood and then the next scene you see him there's no blood on him whatsoever and i'm like he was drenched in blood and like he suddenly just had all his clothes dry cleaned and had a good shower in between all of this i also a bit question the humanity the normalness of some of the people because the one kid gets hit by a car and burnt alive oh my goodness and they found out that it's he was dressed up as Michael in the same outfit as Michael Myers. I thought, yeah, Michael's dead. No, he's not. Oh, well, let's just move on. Like, you, humanity a little bit. You like, just <laughs> murdered a teenager for nothing. I'm like, okay, it's fine. We'll just continue. It was, yeah. It was very bizarre. That's what I mean with, like, all the characters and everything were so underutilized that they could have been used to make the plot more interesting. Oh, yeah. Like, the cop who hit him could have been remorseful when he found out and there could have been some more sewn into that to make the movie more compelling but it wasn't it was just so lackluster and so even the uh, cop whose daughter died in the first one went on a bit of a rampage for half of the movie and then like we forgot about him yeah <laughs> i don't know i don't know. underutilized i think if it had been written better it would have been a lot more interesting yeah because they had the beginnings of an interesting movie and all the characters and the plot line that was already established from the first movie and yet they kind of just like wasted it. A little bit. So then overall, it's not as good as the first one. I mean, direct continuation and maybe you could just make them one movie and it would probably be better, but by itself, it's really, it's okay. It would be a long, boring movie. <laughs> I think it would make the first movie worse, but it would make the second movie better. Yes. In terms of ratings, I gave it a four. I gave it a five. So it has a total of four and a half. And I think who's going to enjoy watching this? I honestly don't know. Maybe if you're a fan of the franchise. But anyone else, even if you enjoy slashes, it was really pointless. <laughs> unless you just like watching people getting murdered on screen for no reason. I think there's too many people that do enjoy that. Yeah, but you I genuinely enjoy some sort of plot line. There was just it was so thin. It, 
you know, paper is thicker than it. They did try and put some plot lines, like him running to say AM on the school board and him drawing the picture. But like, it was like, he's busy on his killing spree and suddenly he's in school quickly to do this and then quickly back at his killing spree at the hospital. Like, after thoughts to try and give plots that he's murderous, he's evil, let's leave it at that. And he uses Sahim as an excuse because you can put on a mask and no one's going to stop you. Whereas in a normal day, if you have a mask on, people might question what you're doing. Yeah. I don't think he's killing anyone because it's Halloween or Samhain. It's more of an excuse and a cover to go on a murder spree. I preferred the first movie's explanation. He's just evil. Hmm. That's it. There's no uh, supernatural or esoteric or any weird thing about it he's just evil yeah and the only like i said the only connection i have to style home is that it's an excuse for him to yep. dress up without getting noticed that's it other than that because like you were saying they were trying to say that it had something esoteric and deeper and or satanistic or something to do with it even though Sahem has nothing to do with satanism but yeah they were trying to point to that and it was just pathetic actually <laughs> So let's know in the comments down below, why does Michael Myers do what he does? Is he evil? Just plain evil? Or is there deeper spooky meanings? <laughs> or something else from the yeah. other movies we haven't watched yet. True. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye. Later.